Liverpool, we everybody. I got my man uh, Gary here. Gary, how you feeling? Yeah, I'm good. How you doing? Are you good there? Good, good, good. Yeah, we haven't had the, the best uh, as far as timing. So we're going to go back to um, Spurs briefly, uh, work, work through the Carabao Cup, and then uh, build up to Aston Villa. And I think it's important, um, although it feels like the Spurs game was such, such a long time ago, it's important to talk about that because, um, you know, mm. uh, that was the beginning of, you know, back to back wins. Obviously, we know that the Carabao Cup was a majority of the kids, but. It's just good to see us get back in, the, in, in winning ways after the um, United game, which even feel, feels even longer ago, and I'm, I'm sure yeah. everyone's gotten over that. But um, the Spurs game, man, um, again, like, I mean, we can go back to many fixtures that we've just hung in and, and the mentality has, has come through. And I know it almost feels like a cliche to some people about the mentality monsters and, and all that, but it's, it's so very true. So just talk to me about that game against Spurs. Um, how much Liverpool continue to just show us um, how much they can come back and they, they never defeat it. Yeah, fantastic performance. I mean, um, yeah, we, we were just top class. Obviously, I apologise to the people um, watching if they can't hear properly. Got not feeling too good, but um, hopefully you don't can hear me. But yeah, fantastic performance. Wow, we were so good in that match. It was one of the, the best performances of the season in terms of mm. the fight we showed. Um, the spirit and what I love about um, that game was that when we were one nil down, which was very very disappointing, um, because what happens is Henderson runs into the field like a clown um, without any awareness around him, gets gets dispossessed, uh, and what annoys me is not not that really getting the ball away, but after it, um, when Alden fails to put a tackle in. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, think, I think it was the whole midfield. I mean, Fabinho had a chop at him. Yeah. Genie had a chop. I mean, Sissoko was good, but Jesus Christ, you look like Ronaldinho on that move, in that move. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Um, Ronaldo felt he, he went to the ground easily. Fabinho as well. You know, and then just going to the ground easy without really getting a um, without fouling him or getting a tackle in. Um, yeah. And then what happens is Trent's got Son right one v one and Henderson. You know, he runs towards Trent's side. I mean, what, what is he doing? Trent's got the outside covered. He's supposed to have the inside covered. So Son can't cut in. And he just got, he goes so far to the right where Son can basically take Henderson out of the game and Trent at the same time. He takes a shot. Lovren, you know, the, the, the header is just like, he puts his hand behind the back. It's like he heads it towards. Instead of heading it, you know, heading it straight in, you know, it's like a half-hearted header. And he goes to the post. Um, and then Harry Kane, obviously, I think Van Dijk's a bit, you know, he's sleeping a bit there um, in that sort of move, uh, uh, you know, ball watching, and Harry Kane's alert, uh, and he scores. But after that, it was a fantastic 90 minutes, wasn't it? Um, you know, what I loved about the performance was that we never stopped. Um, we were never, you know, rushing, we were never playing, you know, in pay- we, you know we weren't, in pay- we weren't uh, impatient at all. Uh, it was all patient, playing, waiting for the right moments, instead of shooting, we played that extra pass to um, create a better chance than we would do. So, you know, it was just fantastic. The, the, the amount of chances we had that first half, Gazzaniga, the amount of saves he made in that match, I think it was that 12 saves, the most, I think, here was in 2017. Um, yeah. You know, so exactly, he made some fantastic saves and kept Spurs in the game. But as I said, this team, whether it's the youngsters, whether it's the senior players, they've all got one mentality installed into them from Klopp. You know, it's they never know when they're beaten. Never, never, never. They don't know when they're beaten. Uh, and the fight they showed was fantastic. And that, that match is, you know, I'm just so proud of, the, of the players in that match. Yeah, they're just relentless, man. And and, and again, it, it, it I, for myself, and I'm sure you probably agree, it's, you know, so long are the, are the days where, um, I mean, just two seasons ago, if, if that would have happened, I think a lot of us would have had our heads down and, and thinking, oh, God, here we go again. But I think this Liverpool team, allows you to just be that much more comfortable and just knowing because they've shown it week after week after week, game after game after game, no matter what, what competition that they're, they're capable of, of coming back and they will come back. Um, it might take a bit of time, but you know, at some point something will crack for us. Um, we'll win a pin, uh, we'll get a goal, whatever the case may be. And so that, that just fills us with, with, with confidence. Let's talk about Henderson since you brought him up. I think it's obvious to say that um, Henderson divides um, supporters and, Obviously, there's people who are on the, the the side of, hey, get behind your player. He's on our team, whatever, whatever. Um, I think it is interesting that it, it, it almost felt like it had to be Henderson that, that popped up in that situation because, let's be real, his form hasn't been great lately. And in that game, he wasn't great. 
but to pop up with that goal to to and and, I, and, I, and that's what I, I like about Henderson at times where he can uh, lead by example as far as as a captain. I say that because in that moment, I think for me, you know, I went down in the box and it would have been all fine for him to just kind of stop, yell at the ref, kick it out to get the ref's uh, attention. He kept fighting. He comes through in the box, um, which we hadn't really had all game in that way. And a beautiful pass by Fabinho. Yeah. And, and, and we'll talk about Fabinho in a second. But to, to latch onto that ball, it was a little shitty of a finish. You know, cool. But he scores the goal, and you see what it what it means to him. And look, players can say all day. They don't, they don't listen to social media. They don't watch social media. But they all have family. They're all human. So someone is telling them, or they're li- looking on social media, and they see, you know, the, the, the things that people say about them. So in my opinion, I just feel like as, as much as, as, as um, the opinion is, is split between him, I think more times than not, Henderson is there and, and available to to put in the work rate um, to 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 try to lead by example, um, and every now and then he pops up with with a moment, whether it be a pass, a, a good a good defensive moment, whatever the case may be. So, just your thoughts on Henderson in, in general, um, uh, you know, stepping up and stepping up and getting that goal, and just overall over the past you know few months, do you feel like there's anything in him that he's contributed um, to the game, or do you feel like he's still just a guy that you, you you'd like to see the back of him sooner than later? Yeah, I mean, listen, with Henderson, right, I'm not a sort of, you know, uh, listen, I, I don't, with Jordan Henderson, right, I don't not like him as a footballer. I think he's a good mm-hmm. footballer. I think he, he brings a lot of things to his team. I think what people think, even on Twitter, that I just, you know, I've got agenda against him. I hate, listen, there's none of that here, because I've said, you, you just look through our previous t- tweets, sorry, when I've praised Jordan Henderson, when he's played well, um, and when I've, when I've, when I've criticised you know, one of my favourite players is that Lil Boudin, Virgil van Dijk. When I've criticised players like Salah, I've criticised players who don't play well. I think you know mm-hmm. that I do that. Um, oh, no, of course. You know, of course. So, it's like, I, he just has these sort of, you know, recently, right, in these past couple of months or months or so, he's been very poor. Um, mm-hmm. In the Spurs game, in that first half, he was atrocious in that game. Absolutely awful. Second half, he stepped up, stepped up a bit, uh, got the goal. Um, as you said, it was a bit of a shit finish, just a scuff, you know, just yeah. have a crack at it. Um, and it went through. Um, you know, but again, I just saw a lot of pointing, you know, a lot of pointing to Alexander Arnold, um, you know, all nonsense pointing where he should be doing the job himself. I know you're the captain, but first of all, I remember what you, he reminds me of a bit of a Matteo Flamini. Um, mm. <laughs> pointing, you know, pointing everywhere, but not doing the job yourself. He was and at Arsenal first, for a while, right? Yeah. And in that mm. first half, you know, he, he gave the ball away for the first one. Um, you know, I thought Sissoko was barging him, outpacing him, bullying him all over the place. Uh, and I remember it's such a similar situation because it always happened against Tottenham. Whether it was Moussa Dembele, remember Moussa Dembele where he used to, you know, get past Henderson? Mm-hmm. Uh, when it was Sissoko. He used to um, out-muscle him too. Yeah, exactly. Out-muscle, out-pace him, everything, you know. So, I think Henderson just plays with a lot of heart, really. I think he's that yeah. sort of player. Um, I don't think he really plays a lot with his mind, with a lot with it, with, with the quality because I think he's he's limited in in certain aspects of the game. Um, I thought he played. I thought I thought he didn't. I, I think he had an okay game against Spurs in the second half. First half I said it was awful. Uh, Genki didn't play, and uh, the team played a lot better. Um, against Manchester United, he had an awful game. Against Leicester, you know, he came on because he, he played shit against Salzburg. He played shit against um, she- Sheffield United, where he got subbed off sixty minutes twice. You know, he, uh, Chelsea, I don't remember him doing anything. You know, uh, Newcastle on the bench. He hasn't had a great season, let's be honest here. You know, yeah. he hasn't been contributing. He hasn't been... And people say that, oh, you know, contributing goals and all that and assisting. It's not a job. But I'm not asking about goals and assists. I'm asking him to do what he did on the, off the back end of the last season. You know, getting mm-hmm. into the box more. Getting into positions more. Um, you know, remember the Chelsea game, we get into that nice little... Pocket of space down the right hand side gives the ball to Mane, who heads it in. Uh, Southampton away, uh, we we makes that run into the box and score the goal. Barcelona at home for the first goal, where his his shot is saved, but he's in the box and he gets a rebound. Things like that. He's sort of taken this position. I mean, it's probably because of clock, but this position of that right wing, um, yeah. and I find it baffling because if you're gonna if you're gonna play a player in that right wing, you play Alex Oxlade Chamberlain, whose delivery is top class. Um, he can strike a ball. I mean, don't even get me started on Arsenal ball. again, Chamberlain. Um, we'll get on that later, but he can strike a ball. His cro- his delivery is absolutely terrific, Chamberlain. Up there with Alexander Arnold's. Um, you know, so 
you know, it's baffling for me, but you just sort of a player that doesn't get dropped no matter, uh, no matter how well other, uh, others play. Yeah, I, there's this talk about Henderson, and, and I've listened to several podcasts, and there's, there's, an, there's this idea that Henderson playing on that right wing or on that right in general somehow opens up space or allows Trent and, and, and Salah to be more effective. I'm not sure if I really buy into that, if that really makes a lot of sense to me, because if he's not on the right wing, we've had space for Trent and, and Salah, so I'm not really sure well, what that is. Quickly, I didn't see Salah get off space um, against Hazard. Right. Yeah, that's that's why I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I don't really get that 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 thought process. But oh, there's people around the world who know a little bit more about football than me, so maybe they have something I, I just haven't been able to see or I'm ignorant to to, to understand. But um, look, he is the captain of our club, and not, I don't want to compare him to Xhaka. Definitely not. But my point is to say that um, you know when that manager made Xhaka the the captain, he was going to play a lot of games because Henderson is our captain. He's going to play. Uh, a large amount of games, and I guess I think collectively we just we just hope that there's more signs of him doing what he did against um, Spurs, mm-hmm. which is big. Let's be real, which was big because I think for for me, he had two big moments in that game. One was a negative, and one was a, a positive. To come back in the game, you have to score that first goal. That gives you momentum to score more. So getting that goal back, that's big. That, that, there's no one can say anything different. You know, what I mean that's that's big. But as you're saying, he hasn't been great. I think he knows that. And, and big up Henderson for coming out in the post match and saying, you know, realizing that, you know, he was the the one that made that mistake. And those mistakes are costly. Yeah. We'll talk about the one that another senior player made in the Carabao Cup shortly. But, you know, Henderson, um, he he is what he is. We know he he has those moments. Um, the Chelsea game a couple seasons ago, a ridiculous shot from outside the box. Um, we 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 know he has these moments. Um, I, I feel like we we would like to see him a bit more than than we have. Um, but you know we, we can we can prepare ourselves to see more of Henderson and just like I said hope that we see um, better performances um, uh, than he has of late. So, um, but moving forward, I think it's sometimes it's good to watch these games back um, as I did last night, uh, the Spurs game and yeah, you know, this 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 guy um, Trent Alexander Arnold. I mean the fact that he's not being called up to England. Um, is whatever people think, but I, I think it works out better for us. I don't know who you can really name, um, I mean, across the world, let alone England, that's better than him at a right back. I mean, you can give me all the talk about his his deficiencies defensively going back, which I think has definitely improved, but maybe people just haven't noticed that. Or maybe he's just so good going that's forward that it's hard to, it's hard to realize. But he has definitely improved defensively. But this guy could have had five, six, seven, eight assists in that game against the Spurs easily. Easily, I mean, he had a, it, it was uh, the ones that stand out are set piece to um, Van Dyke. He he gets a yeah. you know Gazzaniga oh. comes up with one of his amazing saves. Um, Sadio oh. Sadio Mane, I don't know what the hell Sadio, and I love Sadio. We all do. I don't know what the hell he's doing on that turn. Um, I mean, he just had so many moments where he's putting incredible balls in, whether it be on the on the ground in the air, whatever. And this guy continues to do this, and you know, it it goes back to the idea of you know this this creative player. The other thing is that. You know, we know how good Fabinho is as far as um, knocking dudes out, taking guys out, controlling the ball, moving the ball, um, stopping the other team from counter-pressing. But I think his passing ability is so underrated. And and I'm starting to think that, you know, the game that he had against um, Spurs, that the passing of the ball, um, whether it be out to a fullback over the top, was just really, really incredible. And I think um, he was very much so the quarterback in a lot of those situations in 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 the second half. So... You know, we're we're starting to see so much. When we talked about, we we'll talk about Ox in a minute, but we're starting to see so many different ways that we can break teams down. Yes, I think the majority of it is from our fullbacks, particularly Trent, but we also have other dudes, um, especially with Fabinho, who can who can dictate the play in certain moments if people are shutting down our, our width. So Trent, man, I just think again, he's just um, he's just been amazing, and I think again, he he has so many moments there where if we were just a bit better, and if guys and nigga didn't have an incredible game then he could have had uh, several assists. But just talk to me about Trent, and do you care about the fact that he's not going to England? I think for us it helps because, you know, that's one less player we got to worry about coming back from international break banged up. What are your thoughts about that and, and, and as far as him playing in England? Well, I mean, listen, when he goes to the Euros this summer, you know, I, I'd like to see Alexander Arnold play. Um, mm. You know, I would like to see Alexander Arnold play. Uh, but, you know, I'm just saying, during these friendlies or Euro qualifiers, I ask, you know, it's, it's, it's music to my ears when I hear that Trippier started ahead of him because it's, it's first of all, it's comedy and it's mm. just brilliant. So, um, yeah, no man that continue. I mean, I want Trent for Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worried about what Gareth Southgate does um, with his use, useless England team um, because, listen, he, he's the one that's played Michael Keegan because apparently he's played more games. Um, uh-huh. So that means that, so that, means that if, if I'm being, I've got a, 
English passport. So if you stick me in that English team, uh, if you stick me in that Everton team, I'll get ahead of Joe Gomez because I'm playing more games. So that, that that's his that's his common sense, isn't it? You know. So listen, with Trent Alexander Arnold, he is absolutely incredible. What a player! I mean, I was just watching him. That Spurs game that just that that opens your eyes up. You think what a player we have here, and he's 21 years old. He's 21, mm-hmm. and he's gonna be he's gonna be here for the rest of his career. Um, you know, so we've got so we, this right back position is sorted for years. The left back position is sorted for years. We've got so many positions sorted for years. Um, and the dead ball deliveries. You know, he, he's just an intelligent footballer, isn't he? Um, yeah. You know, when when you compare him to fullbacks around the world, we compare him to people like Wanda Saka. It's, it's you look at anything, it's, it's comedy, isn't it? It's absolutely comedy because it, this talk about Alexander Arnold being defensively. Um, that he can't defend is actually a myth, really, because it's come up as you know. I don't think Alexander Arnold's like you know the, the greatest defender. You know, he's a but he can. He's a good defender. You know, when his concentration is at it, he's a good defender. Um, you know, he is. But but and it's also because he's playing in such a in, in, in a system where he's being asked to basically play as a right winger for the whole game. You know, where he's going to be attacking, he's, he's going to leave spaces behind because we're on the front for every game. And when right. you see teams like Spurs come into Anfield and park in the bus, it just shows the level that we're at. You know, when Spurs mm-hmm. come to Anfield and park in the bus, when Arsenal come to Anfield and park in the bus, when Chelsea basically was sitting back in that first half at Stamford Bridge, when United park the bus at their home ground, it should. When City don't even play their main game against us and came to Anfield last year and, had, and was cautious, and you know this Pep Guardiola is going to change his game plan. When that happens, you know that we're the best team in the world, we're elite, and all that stuff. Um, yep. I mean, yeah, Trent was fantastic, absolutely brilliant, and yeah, you know, the performances are just getting better and better. Um, Fabinho, as Klopp called him, Dyson, the Hoover, he sweeps. No, 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 no. I didn't get that. I didn't get that reference. What is Dyson? Uh, it's like a Hoover. It's like a vacuum machine. A vacuum machine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got gotcha. you. So basically, he, he's sweeping everything up. You know, that's yeah. what he does. He yeah. sweeps everything up. But the, the thing that people don't understand is he is incredible on the ball. He is absolutely terrific. Underrated, I, man. Underrated. An example is um, last year, Marne. Remember that little thing ball to him uh, against Manchester United? That ball, that little thing ball he played. How, how can I forget? That's one, of, that's one of Fabinho's, like, his hallmark passes. He did it, he did it uh, to Salah in, in the, in the um, Spurs game. Salah didn't finish it, but he loved that little yeah. ding. That little ding over the top. I mean, the, the guy, it's like a yo-yo connected to his foot. I mean, it's unbelievable, man. And this, and this is what top teams do, though. This is the top teams do. They don't have, um, you know, five, ten minutes of, of pressure. They have mm-hmm. relentless pressure. Um, you know, keeping up the tax, keeping up the the, the 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 pace of the game. You know, not letting, us, not letting Spurs slow it down. Because that's what Spurs tried to do in the first half, especially. They tried to kill the game. They tried to, you know, dive, take three kicks. You know, get in the referee's faces just to try to slow the game down against Liga. You know, not not very surprised after going two one up. He wasn't really taking with those uh, on those goal kicks anymore, was he? Um, but yeah, I mean, we we were just fantastic. I mean, Salah, uh, I thought we used quite quiet in the game, but does what he does pops up with a goal. I'm fine with that. Mane, I thought he was fantastic as well. Um, you know, just he just gets in the in the game much more, doesn't he? Um, you know, he, he's always involved in everything in every attack that we go through. Firmino, I thought was 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 a uh, I can't remember the game. Like, was it Firmino? For, yeah, Firmino was quite good, wasn't he? Firmino. Uh, I thought Firmino was a good game, but obviously Spurs parking the bus very hard to operate spaces. But yeah, the much better game than Man United. Um, and Ronaldo Henderson a bit slow, bit bit ponderous. I mean, Ronaldo, shoot me! What are you doing? Was, yeah, that was, was irritating. I was, was irritating. putting my hair out there. I was I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure what he was waiting for. A, a, a better open window than he had when he first got the ball. I, G, look, Genie. Look, I love all the players, but Genie is one of those dudes in the midfield that really, really frustrates me sometimes. I'm just thinking, especially when you see what he does internationally. It's like, bro, just wh- why do you act like you don't know how to play football in the final third when you play with Liverpool? And I say yeah. that, and I, look, I look, I get it. People will say, oh, Barcelona. Yeah, I get all that. Sheffield United, fine, great. But bruh, I need to see that more often. If you're in that situation, if you're not, if, if you're in a situation, take the shot. If you're not gonna take the shot, why are you? Why are you there? Yeah. I don't get it. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that, that Sheffield United shot was a complete fluke, anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. That, no was, doubt. that was straight the keeper and the keeper missed out because previous to that, we know them had that two or three shots in that game were that were atrocious too. Um, yeah. You know, so, so 
But uh, listen, as a bit of Henderson, whatever. You know, I thought I thought they did okay. Didn't have the best games, I didn't think. Um, I thought fullbacks were fantastic. Van Dijk was a uh, was totally terrifying. Harry Kane showed Lovren how to do it because oh my word, Lovren. I was having flashback moments to flashback memories to to, to Wembley Stadium a few years back. <laughs> when you got hooked. Yeah. Harry Kane against uh, yeah Harry Kane against Lovren. I mean the pace he showed there was just awful against him. So it's what do you remember? That? I think it's the like, Gazaniga ball. One goal kick and Son's behind on the defense and Lovren can't catch him. And that could listen, be over. Look, listen, I, I I learned this when I was young as a defender. You don't let the ball bounce, and it's stuff yes, like the, that that, uh, that like, people will say. Oh, Lovren's a great defender. He played in the World Cup, played in the champ, played in Champions League final. Yeah, that, those are all facts, but still. And I and I tend to agree. I mean, he's 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 obviously um, this is a, this is his position, right? He plays defender, so he should know certain things. But when things like that happen, it just makes me think, man, that the 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 occasion sometimes seems to be too big for Lovren, and he doesn't know how to just settle himself, use his damn brain, and and yeah. do what the, the basic thing. The same thing happened in the, I think it was the Geek game where he could have just ushered the ball out, but no, he wants to be flashy. It's it's stupid shit like that. That and we're gonna get into that because because this matchup this matchup thing. I mean, I know people like you know, Mame, you know, God bless him, you know, he and and I and I tend to be a, a positive like him, but I'm a little concerned because Gomez didn't show me anything midweek, which we'll talk about, and Lovren is yeah. Lovren, so I'm a little concerned. But because the the rest of the back four or five, if you add the goalkeeper, are, are playing at such a high level, I think we'll be fine. But Lovren yeah. does worry me. Um, but just that back to Fabino w- real quick. Yeah. How how good is it to be away? And again, I don't want to jump on Henderson or, or Genie, but how good is it to know that our six is just Fabinho, a guy who's born to play that role? We don't have you know, because there's times where Hendo and and Genie play at the six, and they, and they both do a decent job. But when Fabinho is being pressed, he's so calm. He's so calm when somebody's pressing him on the ball. He's so calm with it. He can turn he can turn a shoulder, turn it back, um, dip a shoulder, you know, whatever, and 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 get the ball off. And I just love how. I mean, there's times where even in your mind you're thinking, all right, you know, man on, somebody's coming on, you give the ball away. But he's so calm, so cool, and it takes and everything is almost like in slow motion to him. He always knows what he's doing. I mean, there was times where he was actually literally on the ground keeping the ball from a dude and then winning the foul. You know, so I just think it's amazing that we're sitting here thinking, should should our number six even play in our next game because he's that important for us? You know, this is not Emery Chan, this is not Hendo, this is Genie, it's not Genie, this is Fabinho who. At the at the moment, I just got to say it. I just think he's the best at his position right now, and I don't think you can really even argue that what he's doing for Liverpool right now is just yeah. really, really, best really best. incredible. But yeah, the league he's the best in the field of the world. Um, I mean, listen, wow, what, I said, what a performance! He's just so he's so good at the ball. He's so clever. He's got a picture of everything um, yep. that goes on everywhere. He knows where the surroundings are. He knows where Harry Kane was. He knows where everyone is, and he knows the mm-hmm. position. The thing with look, look, the thing with um, Henderson, right, in the number six was he didn't know the position that he, his position was poor, and what 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 he ended up doing was you know pressing high, you know pressing high in positions he didn't need to, leaving him, leaving himself exposed, um, you know you know wasting energy in that six role because with Fabinho you just see him jogging around in his with his long legs, but he presses it right in the right times, and you don't see him, he doesn't really break a sweat, Fabinho because. With a number six role, it's all intelligence. All you need is a brain with that number six role. You don't need to, you don't, it's not like an eight where you need to press, where you need to be active box to box. You need to know the position of the game um, and understand the game. And Henderson doesn't have that. When Adam does a bit more, uh, a lot more than, than, than Henderson, than that six. that's why I said Henderson's always A for me and he never has been uh, a six, right? Um, because I think his pass is uh, limited in, 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 uh, in, that, in certain aspects of the game. Um, you know, I think, and I think Ronaldo was much more energetic, and he he gets into tackles more, and he, he can sweep up a lot more better than Henderson. Um, but with Fabinho, as I said, it's so great to have a player that's twenty six years old. You know, he's going to get better and better. He's in the prime of his career, and as he just turned twenty six uh, a few weeks ago, a week ago. So uh, I think it was Gate, wasn't it, this birthday? So mm-hmm. yeah, that's really good. And, I mean, I just want to touch on that Lovren point because that's that's really you know I really want to get to that because. What this World Cup, Champions League final World Cup myth? I mean, that World Cup really gets me irritated because he played, <laughs> right? Um, because he they went the extra time three times. I think they beat, they beat the last sixteen. Um, Denmark on penalties, 
They beat um, Russia in the quarterfinals uh, an extra time again. They beat England on the same finals and they conceded four against France. So I don't understand what, what what this World Cup thing is like. Like like it's coming up against quality oppositions. You know, England. Okay, yeah, they they bowled anyway. You know, the bowled job. You know that Denmark, Russia, they're not top sides. So I don't really understand it. Um, I mean, in the Champions League final, in the Champions League run, I have to give credit to him. I thought he actually played really well in the Champions League. If I'm honest with you, uh, I thought in the final he was very very good in the final. In the semi final, I thought he was good. In the quarter final against City, he was good. So I'll give him credit there. And with him, right, he's not like the worst defender ever, but right. he's got moments. And I think that's the thing. He, it's the moments with him. And they're all, I think what Jamie Carragher says it's spot on most of the time. I see he says, Lovren's a very emotional defender. Um, I think if we go 2 1 up and like, the crowd's getting up, he's the type of guy to you know, get a red card or make a stupid tackle, you know, or leave, him, leave, him, leave himself exposed. Um, trying to press, trying to press up the pitch, and then get trying to get the fans up, and trying to press up the pitch, and leave themselves exposed, and and, and Tottenham will score, or other team will score. Do you know what I mean? He's such an emotional defender. He makes he makes moments not thinking with his head. You know, he just he just does them. Um, and with Jake, what is he doing there? Honestly, what is he actually doing? The ball hasn't yeah. even got enough power to roll out. The ball is literally about to stop a meter before the ball's going out, and he's, he's waiting there. I don't know what he's waiting there for. Smash the ball out, get back in position. Spurs, he's in the ball bounce and Son's got, got, got in behind him. Harry Kane again. Um, how many times did Harry Kane beat him in the head up? I was getting so frustrated, you know. Um, yeah. but then I'm, I'm saying, oh, Joe Gomez start, Joe Gomez start. But I look what Joe Gomez does in midweek, and what does he show me? What did he show me in midweek to say, oh, yeah, well, this is why he should be starting? Honestly, what did he actually I mean, show I, me? There, there were people bigging him up for that performance. I don't know what the hell they were watching, but I was highly disappointed in, in Gomez and some of, some of the other <laughs> senior players as well. But no, I was, I was, because I mean, you think about that back four, besides Milner, I'm only saying Milner because he's, he's been around for a while, but Gomez needs to be the Van Dyke of that defense. He's, he's the more, he's the most experienced of the you know, two kids, well, three kids with the goalkeeper. You need to be the guy who's, you know, leading that back four, you know, and, and I just didn't see that. And, and again, the, when, you, when you're playing with a lot of guys who haven't played together, you're going to see some disjointed performances. But I was highly disappointed in Gomez. I know he hasn't played a lot, but that's, again, like some of the kids, that's your moment to really put on a performance. So Klopp can say, OK, Aston Villa's coming. I was thinking about using Lovren, but Gomez was so great. I'm going to use Go- Gomez. But you kind of thought when you saw Lovren not in the lineup, he was going to be probably the starter in the Aston Villa game. I can't see that changing. Um, I mean, uh, all in all, I'm I'm comfortable enough with Lovren starting, mainly because I have no choice anyway. I have to be comfortable with whatever we go with because I, I trust Klopp and, and all that. And it just looks like right now, with Matt being out, it looks like Lovren is the guy. Who- I don't have, uh, quickly, Aaron, before you continue, I'll just say one sentence. I don't have the same confidence as Marvin has. Let me just say that quickly. Say it again? I just don't have the same confidence as Marvin yeah, has. No, no, I, no, I get you. I mean... I- I hear where Mame is coming from, but I mean, I think Mame would admit himself. Himself, he knows that Lovren is he's capable of these mistakes. But again, because we're so good collectively, you just hope we can kind of paper over that. And 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 you know, again, he had a great game against was it Leicester? So maybe we'll see that form. I don't know. And I mean, even in the Spurs game, the the mistakes that he was making, there were certain things. That, and and because it's Lovren, let's be honest. Sometimes it's hard for us to even really see some of the the positive things. I, I speak for myself. Sometimes it's like because he's so bad at times. It's like the good things are kind of like, yeah, I saw that, but mm. but he did make some 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 um, important uh, blocks, um, saves with, with his foot, whatever like that. So again, like, let's just hope that we're we're getting the Lovren that um, the, the good Lovren. Let's just say that hopefully we're getting the good Lovren with as little mistakes as possible. Um, and I think if that happens, we'll be good. Look, at the end of the day, all due respect to to Aston Villa that's coming up, um, that should be a game where he he can do well. You know, um, I don't know if we'll, we'll get into the, let's let's get into it now. Actually, um, just closing on the the Spurs game. Um, you know, also, I think, you know, Mane is really, really discovering a, a very, very quality way of winning penalties, in my opinion. Um, very, very smart. Very, very uh, just crafty. I think he knew what he was doing. Um, I think uh, Arya knew, knew what he was doing as well. And so um, that, that's the second one in a row, I believe. Um, I can't remember the first game where he gets the penalty. Was it against Lester, I guess, with um, Drinkwater? Yes, yeah, Bryson. Yeah, Brighton. yeah, Brighton. Yeah, yeah, Brighton. Brighton. Sorry. Yeah, he he knows how to. He, he saw Aurier drawing back with his foot, and he pretty much gets in between the ball and 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 the. And again, the game will be remembered for for Salah and getting the pen and 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 Henderson and rightfully so. But you got to get big up 
big up Mane for doing it. And, and, and again, I keep saying this. I think the score really, really flattered Spurs because they were, and, and they had a really good goalkeeping performance because you brought up them sitting back and they, they definitely did that. And I think their whole plan was to, you know, for, for them to score that early was the best thing they could have wanted or could have asked for. They got that and they just sat back the whole game for the rest of the 89 minutes. And all this talk about Liverpool still struggling with, with low block teams, the score shows you that. But if you watch the game, we didn't struggle with the way they played defense. How many times did we get past them and in the box? We, we weren't finishing. And the goalkeeper had probably the best game of his career, of his life. But that that scoreline for me really flatters Spurs. And, and if you're a neutral or if you're just starting to watch the game and you see the score, you think, ooh, Liverpool really struggled, but we didn't. Um, we, maybe you could say we struggled to, to get the goals and take our chances. But, you know, we were really, 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 you know, good in that game. I think, and, I, and I can see why people are saying that was the, their favorite performance because, you know, we were so, so good all over them. And Spurs didn't know what to do. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I just think that's a, a great way to just bounce back from the, the result before that. I mean, I think the Gink game really kind of started that. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get the clean sheet, cause, and we know why. But the Spurs game was really, really good. Um, and, yeah, so like just moving towards the, the, the Carabao Cup. Um, from the kids, man, who really stood out for you? Um, from the kids? Um, I thought Elliot was, was uh, showing moments in the game. Um, I think he, he made that that pass. I think with it, it was such a, it was a game full of errors, full of misplaced passes. Oh no, of course, uh, both teams. You know so. It was a game where uh, it was the most in, enjoyable game of this season um, because as far as the lineup, for sure, yeah, yeah, because of the lineup. Of, 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 uh, first of all, because it was a game where I didn't really feel pressure to win as old. You know what I mean? It's like if yeah. we go out, you know what, whatever. Um, and I just enjoy it. I was, I was just laughing most of the time, you know. It was just a, it was a fantastic one. When Origi when Origi scored those goals, you know, when when Willis scored that goal, uh, when it's five four, I was really disappointed. And when Origi scored that fifth goal, you know, I started jumping up, celebrating because I was oh, yeah. I wanted to win that. I wanted to win that. Um, and uh, you can see Klopp again. You know, Klopp was very very happy for the not not really because we're going through, but mostly because of the, the kids' performances. Uh, Elliot, I thought was good. Because to play 90 minutes as a 16 year old there coming up against Kalesna, you know, an experienced defender. I thought he were, uh, you know, he, you know, good, sh- showed uh, showed some good character there to keep on going and showed moments. Uh, Curtis Jones was fantastic when he came on. Um, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Brilliant. Bruce I didn't realize I, I, I didn't realize he got the um the assist for I think that's yeah. first Riga go. Yeah. Uh, a Brewster, I thought he was poor in the first half, but in the second half, I thought he pressed well. Um, yeah, I, but I, I, again, I don't think that he's getting enough chances this one. You know what I mean? I thought, I don't think and that's the thing nobody. And see, that's the thing nobody's talking about. They're just saying, "Oh," and I, and I probably am slightly at fault for this. But when you really look at it and, and analyze the game, um, people are bigging up Martinelli for for Arsenal, and fine, he's a good young player, but he's getting the, the service. He's getting the kind of punch in poacher goals. He's not really. It's not like yeah. he's creating off one foot and, and doing a move or anything. He's getting these goals that are coming across the box, and I mean, he's hitting them in. So as good as he is as a young player. I wouldn't say he's necessarily doing better than than Brewster, and plus he's getting more opportunities. They, they got they got they got the Europa League, so he's getting more opportunities. Exactly, that's the, the league club, your uh, Europa League is so always getting more starts. I mean, this is the thing when you're a Champions League club, you can't win your fourth to give your players a start. You know, what I mean, it's not like Europa League, you're in group stages where you're playing, you know, teams and you know just crap teams basically. Yeah. We, can run, we can't do that, and that means he doesn't get as much minutes, but. No, I thought, first of all, I love this passion when we're celebrating goals. I oh, I love, uh, love seeing that, man. I love seeing you know, that. Uh, it just started from the kids as well. And, you know, Especially just, after his pin. I love that that, that yeah, pump it, to, the, it, to the crowd. It just feels good. You know? It just feels like you know, they care. They want to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it's important. that I just like it when I see players celebrating like that. And, you know, it just shows that, that they feel the same way as we do. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's what we ask those fans. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, I thought Bruce, and, and listen, he, the run he makes across the box causes Mustafi to basically shit himself and put it in, in, in the back of the net. You know what I mean? He yeah, makes that good run point. Good if, point. If it wasn't for Mustafi, he scores that goal. You know what I mean? I, I think it was Jam saying, oh, when do we start questioning Bruce stuff? <laughs> <laughs> that was two games. He's yeah. like, oh, I'll just get, I'll just get so, I mean, I love Jam, but oh, you do so much. Oh, no, no, much. I, hear, I, I, I know what you mean. And, and we forget and, and and because because and this is a, a almost like a I think this is a um, compliment to to um, Brewster really we forget number one and I don't want to make excuses but the fact of the matter is because we make these excuses for other players but we choose to make them not I mean not make it for other for certain players so Brewster first of all the age 
Secondly, he's come back from a serious, serious, serious injury. And yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I mean you, he, he needs time. He, he need, it's not like he's playing week in, week out, and you can really judge him. He's playing, he's okay. played two games. He's played two games. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we got, we got to be patient with him. It's not like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I, I do get the frustration. And it really is just coming from a level that Liverpool have set. You know, if we were Arsenal or something like that, we wouldn't, because we'd be like, oh, we're, we're team shit anyway. But because, because, yeah. because, our, because the expectations are so high, um, we can we can be a bit unfair on some of the young players, but Brewster will be fine, man. I think he'll be totally fine. And again, his work yeah. rate was so good. He had a moment there where he was pressing Mustafi. He could have got a go all of that. Yeah. But I mean, you you, yeah, you saw good. the signs, and he got for, for that kid. He got to just take the positives and go with it. I thought um, Nico Williams was really impressive. Um, I think he gave yeah. the ball away just like everybody else did. But I think he was really really impressive. Obviously, he gets the assist for that that goal at the end. Um, but yeah. I thought some of his some of his footwork, some of his um, control in tight spaces. Uh, he, him and Elliot did pretty good on that right side. So he's one that going into the game, I, I had never, I don't even remember hearing this dude. So to come in instead of Larucci, I don't know if Larucci was hurt or whatever, to play a role that we're, we're used to seeing Trent play. I thought he he held himself in, in good standing for the most for most part, in my opinion. Yeah, and you know what? Quickly on Bruce, if I could touch on the, the right back uh, Williams. Yeah. Well, the thing is, right? As, as I said, Bruce, Dahl, right? He was on the sixteen seventeen season, which is three years ago. Right, three seasons ago, he was on the bench on April 2017. That was our last home defeat in the Premier League season, uh, since since then. We haven't lost yet, which was Palace at home. He was on the bench then, um, for that game. And then he had he, he wins the other he, he's top goal scorer. He benches Sancho in the under 17 World Cup. Then he gets injured, right, for a year, for a whole year, a year and a half actually. I think it's a year and a half. So, but when when Jimmy gets injured and he has a few poor performances, we say, oh, he needs time. Let's give him some patience. So let, why don't we keep the same energy with Brewster? You know, it's like we forget that he's actually been injured for a year and a half. Just like Chamber, but with Chamber, we say, I'll give him time and he's get rid of So does Bruce not get, need, need rid of them? Because he's yep. getting less opportunities than Oxford Chamber. You know what I mean? Yep. So he didn't have the best of games against MK Dons. But what I wanted to see was an improvement. And I saw an improvement against Arsenal. I saw a big improvement in terms of his pressing, in terms of his all round game. I thought he was very, very good, especially in that second half. Um, you know, in 180 minutes, people question him. It's, it's delusional. And I, if it's Jams, my guy, deluded opinion. I'll say it. It's a deluded opinion, if I'm honest with you. Um, you can't. You, you just can't. You can't. You can't question the man. You know, he's been injured for a year and a half. Can't do two games. You know, so Brewster, I, I'm, I'm buzzing. I, I think he's going to get much, much better. And I'm behind him. Williams, on the other hand, fantastic. I mean, very raw. Obviously, young boy. Very, very oh, raw. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, you know, a bit, you know, a bit rash sometimes. Few misplaced passes, but that ball near the end to Farigi, what a ball! If that's that is an Arnold, if that's Trent putting that in, you know, we're we're all going crazy. That's a fantastic ball. The weight on the ball, just have a good dozy, and Origi obviously puts it back in there. His uh, all round game was brilliant, and I'm very very happy um, with his performance. You know, let's uh, uh, let's get on some of the experienced players. On the other hand. Oh, oh, please, let's do it, yeah. Let's do that, because I, I was actually going to say, let's move on to Villa, but I haven't really got started here. Uh, yeah. Ten and a half, I thought we could have done better with a few, with a few saves, um, with some of the saves, but he does a, gets a penalty from Ceballos, and credit him. Right, yeah, Gomez now. Um, I, I thought we saw it with Gomez, right? We saw moments where this is why we miss him. Um, those little bursts of acceleration where you can win the ball, you go around Martinelli, uh, he can, you know, barge him, win the ball, and he had some brilliant uh, moments like that. But mm-hmm. his position, when Elliot gives the ball away, why is he trying to step up? You know, yep. and, they, and then, do you know, what, do you know which one I'm talking about? I know exactly which one you're talking about. Why is he trying to step up? I, I don't know. I don't, I, it's beyond me, man. I have no idea. I'm frustrating performance it. overall, man. Very frustrating. Salzburg get this chance, messed it up. Um, and if he played well against Salzburg, he would have played against um, Leicester, and he would have played against, obviously would have played all time, he's about to play, but then he would have played against Gate, and then he would have played against, um, what's his name, uh, Spurs, and then Lovren would have played against uh, Arsenal, and then you would have, so he missed a big chance there, and Lovren sort of come into this now, where he's like, you know, no, he's, he's been favoured more than Klopp, uh, uh, more than Klopp, sorry, more than Gomez, Klopp's favoured more than Gomez. Yes. This ball was ball. I thought Milner, uh, made that mistake, uh, which is very sloppy again, you know, with the fourth goal. But I thought he had, he had the good game overall. Chamberlain, I thought, when I, I think Chamberlain did that, he didn't have the best of performances in the game himself. Uh, but 
he does what Alex Oxley Chamberlain does on the body. What a strike! Again, you know, this is why this is why I love Chamberlain. Um, and Lalana, I thought we actually had a very good game. I thought he was actually one of the, I thought he was the best on the public building, so I don't know if you agree with that. But I thought Lalana was actually very good. Um, you know, he, he's good. obviously he gets overrun in the field a few times, but he's controlling on the, on the gate on the ball. Um, he, <clears throat> sorry about that. Uh, he, he, I love his crimes. I love his crime terms, Zoe's crime terms, your own crime terms. I love them as well. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think, listen, we, we, with Adam Lallan, I think we've all, we know that Adam Lallan is technically a fantastic footballer. Uh, we know what, how good he was a few seasons back, but he's not going to get to that level anymore and he's going to be a rotational player until he leaves at the end of the season. Um, Keita, very, very poor, I thought. Very poor. And let's just say I'm starting to get a bit frustrated now. Um, because forget the performance or that, just forget that. I thought he was invisible the performance. But again, look, one little slip and, he, and, he, and he's injured. And, and there was rumours that you'll, you'll be available for Aston Villa. Um, a few rumours that you'll be available for Aston Villa, but Klopp said he's not going to be available. And he said he doesn't yeah. know when he's going back. And the last time he said that, he was injured for two months. So, listen, ah, oh, I'm, let's just say, I'll, I'll, Listen, you know me, I'm positive. You can't get any more positive than me. But mm. I'm starting to lose patience here, mate. I'm re- I don't know about you. I'll, I'll, what do you think? Because I'm starting to lose patience. Yeah, um, and, and I understand it's, it's easy to do that because, I mean, he's given us all the reason to lose patience because every time he can have a moment or two, he just falls off. But, uh, you know, kind of like you were alluding to, even before the injury thing or the precautious thing. Actually, I guess it wasn't an injury because if it was just a precaution, he'd be playing for sure. But it sounds like Klopp doesn't doesn't know when he'll be back. So um, the performance, though, in a game like that, Naby, you have got to step up, bro. Like, you, you, I mean, come on. You and not even not even because of the opposition, because I think Arsenal were definitely more stronger than us, and that gets that gets um, glossed over as well. They were they had a stronger squad than us, and even the bench players that came in, you can tell Emery was like, I got to win this game. So you know. Naby is, is, is disappointing. It's frustrating. You know, everything we thought about this guy, we waited so long. He finally came, and all we're able to see is just glimpses. And then over those, after those glimpses are done, he's back injured again. Look, I feel for him. I don't know what it is. I don't know why his body keeps breaking down like this. I really don't get it. It was a slip, and you're hurt from that. You know, so I, I, I don't know, man. I just um, – he's had, he's had the, the worst look right now as far as a new signing, you know, because we have – I still feel like I don't know what kind of player this is, and that's a shame. He's been here long enough that you, you should try, you should kind of know what kind of player he is. And personally, I just don't. Now, am I going to give up on him like some people are and say, uh, you know what? Because there's been several people, an overwhelming amount of people who are saying that, yeah, let's just go ahead and count our losses with him and move on. I'm not going to go that far, but I definitely get where they're coming from, and I can't knock them for saying it because I think there's a player in there. And like I said, I don't really know what kind of player he is, to be honest. I mean, I can give you an idea, but... I haven't seen enough consistency from him just as far as his, his health, his fitness, to really know what he offers us. Because he's shown us so many things. He's shown us that he has an eye for goal. He showed us he can beat somebody on the job. He shows some defensive um, capabilities. But I just don't know because I haven't seen him enough. Now, the, the positive coming from this is that we'll probably see more Ox now, right? And I think with Ox, like you said, he didn't have a great game. I actually expected more from him playing against Arsenal. But, okay, that is what it is. And I tend to agree slightly with you with, um, with Lalana um, because – the midfield just wasn't great in that game. And I think out of the three, by default, you almost give it to Lalana. He was cool. I think seeing Lalana in the sixth, though, is a bit cringy, in my opinion. But I think he does have the ability to get away with the, with the Cruyff turn and things like that. And Lalana's been decent over the past few weeks when he's played. But, yeah, the Navity thing is hard. And I think, look, Ox, what he, if nothing else, what he showed is that, again, this is two games in a row, he can get a shot from outside the box. And we don't have that right now. So, and, he puts, I, and he puts the ball in for Zafi's own goal. Yeah, so I mean, I think I think we need to start seeing a bit more ox in the prim. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, I trust Klopp whatever he chooses, but that the, what he's offering us, even if it's just like a one minute here, one minute there, because the gate game he wasn't great, but look at the goals he scored. So especially the second one. So Klopp's got to be thinking, you know what? I can use that in one of these games coming up. I don't know if it'll be Aston Villa, I don't know if it'll be City, but I feel like one of those games Ox needs to start, in my opinion. Uh, because that other threat, that element of surprise outside the box is something that we need. He's proven that he can do that against City. So uh, that, that'll be something to keep our eye on. But, yeah, back to back to Naby. I'm, I'm really, really disappointed. Not necessarily in him, just in the situation because, you know, he can't help it. But it's just frustrating because I think it, it was starting to look like we were getting guys back. Now we got Matip out. Now we got him back out. Um, there's questions over what's going on with Shakiri and his calves. I don't know what's going on with that. So 
It's kind of look. It's not the worst thing in this situation. It's not the worst thing in the world. But in this moment is where we tend to in this part of the season. Well, you know, going towards December is where we tend to kind of wobble slightly. And so I'm just hoping that we can we can't afford any more injuries. I think that's obvious. And and um, you know, yeah. I just I, I wish the best for Nabby. Um, it is frustrating. It's irritating. But you know, what can you really say, man? It, it is what it is. Um, but the the thing about this game and the Carabao Cup is that. It looks as though this mentality that has been instilled in the first team has just trickled through through every player in the club. Um, and I haven't seen any of the under-18s or 17s, whatever it is, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they they have that mentality as well. It's just something about this team where they never know if they're beaten. It was a sloppy game, although it was really entertaining to watch. I mean, both teams are giving the ball away. Um, and, you you know, you expect that with, with certain kind of lineups. But the fact that we just kept our kept our nerve and, and won the game and, you know, those, you know, Apparently it's supposed to be Divac who took the the, the last penalty, but he, he let um, Curtis Jones take it. And for him to be a you know a young scouts lad, it was just great to see him to, to get that goal. I mean the pressure he must have felt, and he was able to hit it off the post and go in. It's just a big moment. And all, those kids, no matter what happens in the rest of this competition, those kids will never forget that game. They'll never forget the moments that they they contributed or the the things they contributed to to the game to to win it. The goalkeeper, obviously, all the young kids who hit their goals. So. You know, Klopp almost seemed like a spectator in that game. He was just really he looked like a kid on the side. Like, he was just so happy for these kids. And I don't think he would have been highly disappointed for us to get out of that competition. Um, in fact, it might have been easier for us. But but in, 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 the, in the grand scheme of things, it's just good to see the kids have that experience and, and move on. Um, and I want to kind of see us go win it now. You know, and, and if you're in a competition, you might as well be in it to win it. Your opinion on Klopp allowing this young group to continue through to the quarterfinals, semi, and final if we get there. Do you think that'll happen? Do you think once it gets closer to a final, we'll put maybe one or two guys in there, maybe maybe a Van Dyke, maybe a Fabinho, a Salah? What do you think about that? Well, I think we'll call a final. I think we'll go with, with basically the same team. Because um, okay. we've got, it's Aston Villa, right? Yeah, and I'm here. Okay. Like, this is crazy because obviously it should be like December 19th or something like that, but obviously we've got the Treble Cup in Qatar, don't we? Yeah, so, yeah. And and and, and oh, the game could be played. Yeah, have you heard of it? Um, the game could be played. The Qatar, the semi final of the, uh, the Qatar World Cup, the um, the Club World Cup, and the Aston Villa Liverpool could be played two two matches of Liverpool played in the same day. I don't know if you yeah, heard of that. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I've heard. But they, I mean, what he'd probably do is just bring the, the the under whatever squad and be like, look, this is what I, all I have left. I mean, I, I don't. I think that would be a strong climb down from Klopp, especially at the comments he had after the game, for him to then go ahead and do that. I mean, it sounds like he's saying that if they can't make it work for them, then they'll just pull out the competition. Well, and whoever no, wants. To. Yeah, well, I think I don't think he will. I don't think he will pull out the competition. I think what I, have, I think what he's done is he's put the pressure on the 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 EFL, the English yeah. football league, to sort of you know change the date. That's what he's sort of done. You know, Klopp's smart. He he's not going to pull out the competition. I mean, it could happen. I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think he will. Um, I'm here in January the eighth, but don't we have the FA Cup then coming up? Um, and the semi finals mm. uh, the semi finals will see in January. So I'm hoping January the eighth. I don't want that two game with one day nonsense. I mean, it, it would be a nice little treat, but I, I kind of just I don't want that really. I don't. I'm not. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Um, just stick it. Let's just stick it somewhere. Um, or we can just do this. You know, win out. Whoever wins on Saturday takes it all. You know what I mean? Takes the Carabao Cup quarter final. Work. And, that that works. works. But uh, uh, but yeah, uh, kids, kids for me, kids for me. The quarters, let's go as far as we can with the kids in the quarter. When it gets to the semis, though, and we're playing City United, then mm-hmm. I think some players have to come in. Well, it's looking in. like it's looking like it could be a, a final four of us, Everton, United, and City. Everton will probably lose to Leicester, so I should probably scratch that. But yeah, so I mean, how how, ama- how amazing would that be, though? You know the two two yeah. derbies for the semi final. That'd be I great. Would love, I would love a Liverpool United final. Let's just say that. Oh no question, no question. So I, I mean, I, it's it's just good to I see that we. Wembley. I'm sorry, what you said? Yeah, I want to go to Wembley. You know, I do want to go there. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, I, I, we're, we're, when we're in the course, if we get past Villa, then we're 180 minutes away from going there. You know, and yeah. this is just, this two far, two leg two leg stuff. It's just a bit. Bit, bit too much. Oh, think, yeah. But What's up with that? That's so strange to me. Why did you just I, have it one, one I, off? I don't get this. Yeah, I don't know why it's two legs. I mean, if you want, if you want to do one off and you say it's unfair, all right, let's just play all the games. Well, let's play those Let's let's play those at Wembley then. Let's play the semi finals at Wembley. Yeah, that's, they're, they're doing too much, man. It makes no they, sense. They end, up playing, they, they end up playing the semi finals of the FA Cup at Wembley. Do you know what I mean? 
So it's like, yes. why can't you say those? So, but see, but see, uh, this is what, and people get mad when you when people clown this cup as the Mickey Mouse cup. But these are the reasons why. I mean, yeah. it, it makes no sense to have that, and then you don't have VAR. Why are you having? A, a, yeah, the, I, I don't, I don't get it, man. I don't, I don't. At first, I was thinking, well, maybe you know, I mean, I, I'm not, I, I don't live in that area. Maybe there's something I'm not understanding, but. To have a semifinal in a in a Carabao Cup, you got to be kidding me, man! You got to be kidding me. So, and, and I get the whole thing about you know, let's say an Oxford makes it, which they won't. Let's say a Colchester makes it, which they won't. You know, they want yeah. the gate, but they they want they want to have one at their place so they can get you know the money, the funds, and all. And I get all that, but but this, I mean, history tells you it's very rare that those teams are going to make it to a semifinal or a final. So, you can kind of scratch that. But it's just nice to see that Liverpool are able to this season really really <laughs> fight on all all terms. And quickly, if they do, they're going to get bad 10 0 by City like last year. I guess Bert, right. I remember. Right. It'd be 12 0 or something crazy like that. So, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, uh... go ahead. Yeah, I said 9 0 at home for City and 1 0 away, 10 0 in aggregate. I'm way surprised. Yeah, I mean, it's disgusting, man. Disgusting. I, mean, I mean, after that 9 0, is it really a reason to play that second leg? I mean, really. <laughs> they, yeah. they, 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 that, that's just a joke. And that's probably going to end up happening again. So we have to watch uh, somebody get drubbed. And then watch the second uh, leg, and then it's just – I don't get it. It's not the Champions League, man. There's no need to have two legs uh, in the semifinal for a Carabao Cup. But we digress a bit. Um, at the end of the day, it's just good to see Liverpool um, get a victory. And uh, I could care less if people value this competition or not. It's just good to see that fight. And if this could be the kids' competition and they can do what they can do to help us win it, again, they're, they're never going to forget this. And honestly, if we get through the quarterfinal, which I think we will, it's Aston Villa, but – you know, I think some of these. I don't think he should just, you know, cut all these guys f- from playing in the semifinal or final. Some of these kids need to need to keep playing. Now he had to make a decision on what those players are, but they deserve to play in the semi and maybe some of them the final. So again, I just think it's big for them. A lot of them won't really be seeing the Premier League starting eleven or the bench. So this is their competition, and I, and I think they deserve that. But um, moving forward, man, Aston Villa, uh, they're all big games. Um, this Aston Villa team have shown to me glimpses of playing some good football. Um, again, uh, it's a way, and I think it'll be a tricky ground there um, at Aston Villa, but at the end of the day, I, I see us getting three points. Your thoughts on Fabinho and this yellow card thing. Um, would you play him? Do you trust him to be disciplined enough? Because he's shown that he has capability of doing that in so many games, uh, particularly in the Barcelona game, that, that tackle on, um, I think it was Suarez, um, early in that match. But, um, would you would you start him in this game? Would you risk him, or would you say, you know what, the city game is far too important? I don't want to risk it. I trust Fabinho to not get yellow card. But I don't trust the referees because mm, good, good answer, good answer. Because the referees can book anyone for right. for. I mean, the Suarez tackle was a great example. He got the ball in that, and he ended up getting yellow card. So it's like you know. And the thing is, like, people say, oh, yeah, but, you know, when he gets a yellow, he doesn't really get a red. But you get more than one chance for a red card, don't you? It's like the referee yeah. will allow you and they'll say, you know, all right, one more chance, don't do it again. But with the yellow card, it, it depends on the ref. It's like how you how the ref is feeling at that point. It's like, you know, like, he, he can just book you straight away with one tackle. You know what I mean? In the first 10 minutes. So I just don't know, like, Fabinho, I want him to play in this game. And Klopp's the sort of manager where he's like, he'll say, I don't want to underestimate anyone. But when I heard his pre- press conference, he is thinking of of, of Benji Fabinho. Um, I don't know. Yeah, if you I, 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 no, I heard. I heard like the first five ten minutes or first five minutes. I got to finish it when I, when we're done there. But um, yeah, well, yeah. What he said was, yeah, he said that he said that you know, see, he's massive. I think he said see, he's massive. But he said he's gonna have to uh, wait and see um, whether he'll put Fabinho in the lineup or not. Because so that obviously he he, he is worried. No, I would say worried, but. They're sort of, you know, he knows that it's there, that, that five year look card thing, and the club is sort of looking at it and thinking, you know what, you know, we have to be a bit cautious here. So, I mean, you can put people say you can put Henderson in the six there, or you can put Lalan in the six. No, don't put any of them in the six. Put Lallana, put, if you don't want to put uh, Fabinho, put Winaldo in the six. Thank you. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's, the only person I want, that's the only person I want to see at six. But you know what? Yeah. Klopp, Klopp works in mysterious ways. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Lalana, bro. But <laughs> I'm just saying, Klopp, Klopp does some funny stuff. I love him, but he does some funny stuff sometimes. But and but see, this goes back to the Fabinho thing. I think, of course, people will say, you know, what's the most important signing we've made since Klopp has been there? People might say Salah. They might say Van Dijk, of course. Adrian. I'm sorry, not Adrian. Um, uh, Allison. Shit. Allison, yeah, thanks. But Fabinho is in that category, if not even better, because, again, 
he's so important to just that spine of the pitch. And we ha- we've been crying out. We had well, we had been crying out for a long time. It wasn't Emery, it wasn't Hendo, uh, it wasn't Jenny. All decent players, but we were searching for an actual, an official number six. And the fact that Klopp could say that in the po- in, in the pre match, you know that that that's big. And so I don't think he'll play him. Um, I can't say I'd be surprised if he did, because again, Klopp, you know, has a mind of his own. He, he does things like that. Not after what he just said in the press conference. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll play him. Um, but I am wondering who he will play, and I hope it's. Well, let's get into that. What, what midfield would you play? Um, obviously K is not going to be fit, so I'd go with Ronaldo in a six. Um, Ronaldo in a six. Chamberlain. Mm-hmm. And Milner. Milner. You go Milner. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, look, it's Aston Villa. And again, I'm anybody, I mean, I doubt any Aston Villa saying we're here at this channel, but um, anybody who may hear this, or, or just between you and me, this is not a, a knock on Aston Villa. But, I mean, let's be real. They, they, they're they not Chelsea. They're not, you know, Spurs. They're not a team that I feel like we would struggle too much with. Um, and I don't know it's enough about them to know how, what kind of football they play. If they're, they're open, or they're, they're, if they're, and then again, it doesn't really matter because when you play Liverpool, no matter what you used to do, you might do something different because it's Liverpool. So I don't know what they'll do at home, but... You know, uh, yeah, I, I just think I think we we gotta just we gotta just yeah. go there and, and with that midfield. I, I like that midfield though. Henderson will start tomorrow, won't he? he oh no doubt, just, no doubt, no uh, doubt. You no, know, I'm it's gonna be Henderson, Milner, and Alden. <laughs> Most likely, and you know what? I wouldn't really mind that. Again, I just think in in this kind of game, you know, we should be able to get a, a lot of creativity um, th- through the whiffs, and I think we should we should be able to make. Make make goals out, out of wherever we need to make it out of. I mean, I think the fact that we, we won't have Naby and Ox might not start and Enfabian might not start shouldn't be that big of a deal against this 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 opponent. So I I, I, mean, I wouldn't really mind that midfield to be honest. Um, it's gonna work. It's gonna it's gonna be tough. And you know, I, I think we'll be more than fine in, in, in the midfield personally. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I kind of go. I go. I go you with your first one. I think we'll play Ox against Gank again. Uh, all the way. Hopefully. Today. Hopefully, and, and maybe even coming off the bench. Look, I, hopefully the game against Aston Villa, it's, it's out of sight um, early in that yeah. game, and so we, we can we can put in Ox and just see what he can do for Leslie Mays. Maybe even maybe Elliot or Brewster. I don't know, but um, you know, again, I think I think if you start to take a certain team lightly, and, and you could be you could pay for it. But again, I just think Liverpool just made it something different this season. You can see that um, in every single game, the mentality, and so. You know they're not going to want to be, before the city game. The worst thing that can happen is to have a loss before going into that game. So um, I, I think we'll be fine either way. Um, but yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see when that lineup comes out an hour before the game kickoff, and to see what he's gone with in that midfield. Because at this point, I still am not 100 percent sure what he'll go with. I do think he'll go closest the closest that he can to his his most loved midfield minus Fabinho. So it'll be clear, curious to see if he goes with Genie there, if he goes with Lalana there. I don't think Hendo will play either way at the six. It'd be between Genie and Lalana. I think it'll be Genie. So we'll see. Yeah. But uh, as, as far as Aston Villa, I don't know what's going on with Grealish. I don't know if he's fit. Obviously, that's probably their best player. Um, McGinn um, has been. Fit. He's not. Apparently, he's fit. Oh, oh he is. He is. He is. Okay. Uh, Mc, you bother about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> McGinn has looked good. Um, let's see. I forget the other guy. They got. Uh, I forget the other guy. That I was thinking about. Oh, uh, Gazi <laughs> is decent. But. Oh, yeah. Say again? I thought you were talking about Wesley, the striker. I'm not really impressed with him yet. Um, I haven't seen – I mean, he's gotten a, a goal or two, I guess. Um, but I, I haven't really been that impressed with him. Um, I'm sure he's a decent I player. but I think we know what's going to happen. He's going to be a big lump. He's going to try on the board up. And he's going to get bullied by Van Dijk. Yeah, uh, and I think I think Tyler for... Mings will, I think Tyler Mings will, try, will try to do the same on the defense. But, yeah. Well, if he, if he goes to Lovren's side, I mean, bloody hell, I mean – uh, Lovren's gonna have some problems against him because I just don't trust Lovren, mate. In one v one duels, I just I don't, I don't trust Lovren. I mean, he's got moments in him. I just I don't have the confidence right now. I really don't. And Gomez right now is frustrating the hell out of me. He really, really is because he's had the few chances now where you have to take them. You know, yeah. yeah. About, oh, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay. I had that. It was, you know, Lovren's, um, he's, he's um, oh, what, it was an article, like, he's, he's, he's come back, you know, and, and he's, he's found a, a way back into the Liverpool team. <laughs> oh, yes, like, he's the revival. Oh, my revival, the revival uh, in Lovren's career at Liverpool. I was thinking revival. I mean, he, he had a good game in the 
He had a shocking game against Gink. He had a sh- he had, he had, again but a shit game against Spurs. And what kind of revival was that? I mean, blah blah blah. That's, uh, he, 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 look, the best thing that can happen to Lovren is what's happened. Matip is out for an extended period of time. And Gomez might as well be out. He just hasn't been playing as high level. So, you know, by default, Lovren's going, cool, good for you. But make the best of it. Just don't be a joke. That's all I'm asking him. Don't be a joke while you're in. Because, look, the best case scenario would be for him to do – now, this is, you know, maybe wishful thinking, and I'd love to be proved wrong. But the best case scenario is for him to do what Matip did for us when him and Gomez went down last season. Um, if yeah. we can get that, if we can get that, great. You know, you know, because you've mentioned it before. He's he's done well in the past against uh, teams like City. So if if you, if you can't put in a good performance against Aston Villa, it's only going to keep people questioning you. It's your job to just. That's why some certain players are just like you have a chance to shut people up. You know, if you're if you're Granit Xhaka, for example, you have a chance to shut people up. Now I think the fans are a little harsh on him, but you have a chance to play really well, and so people can say, oh, you know what. I don't really like this player, but today he was good. And the more performances you put in like that, the less people have anything to say. So, Lovren comes up as this guy who wants to shut people up, and he'll come out and talk and stuff like that. So, look, I'm, I'm going to just be – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to be positive about Lovren. He worries me to death, but this is what we got, Gary. You know what I mean? And so, let's just hope that he can put yeah. in good performances or good enough performances to where it's not anything glaring or he's not costing us a point or games yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're, we're due a clean sheet, and I just hope against Aston Villa we can get that. Um, as good as our defense is lately, I've almost been, when I do score predictions, I'm all, I've always probably just put in whatever we have to one because I just feel like there's a chance that we might concede something somehow, some way. So, um, but against Aston Villa, we know who they are. We, we know what they are. That should be three points for us, and it set us up beautifully for the City match. And I think City have – oh, they have Southampton. Never mind. That, that should be a walkover. <laughs> Yeah, and also, for you. yeah, with Gomez, right? You can't listen. Gomez can't say, "Oh, I haven't had chances in the season. I haven't." Yeah, you know, listen. Gomez started the season. He played against City in the Community Shield, right? I thought he had, mm-hmm. he had a decent game there, but again, City got in behind a lot of times, um, mm-hmm. especially in the first half, and he had a few chances in the second half because I remember the game quite well against Norwich, right? He played against Norwich as well. He started the first game of the Premier League season. Right, like, remind me. Did that? Did that go to shootouts? I forget. Did that go to penalty shoot? Yeah, penalty shootout. We won okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, got gotcha. And Matip, Matip came off the bench and scored the goal to to, eat, mm, to get. Good point. <laughs> good point. And then Gomez gets another chance in the Premier League. Matip's on the bench. Um, so Who's that we, against? Norwich. That oh right, right, right. Okay. And then Norwich obviously had a lot of chances, didn't they, to score? Uh, yeah. And we looked at the shaking defense. So then, so the massive comes, and then actually, then Gomez plays again against Chelsea in a Super Cup, 120 minutes, where he plays mm. at because Trent, Trent gets a rest, I think, doesn't he? Trent gets a rest. Yeah, mm. Trent or Trent doesn't play. So Gomez comes to the right back, 120 minutes. Then he just starts getting, a little, you know, it didn't really play that well that game anyway. Um, and then he's just, and the matter comes in against Southampton, comes against Arsenal, scores against Arsenal, and he just plays incredibly. He's just, he's just, it's a different level. I don't think Gomez played. He wasn't. He wasn't having shocking performances, but he wasn't playing at the level that he was last season because we right. were going to play at a different level. And Matty was playing at the level that he was the previous season. So then, yeah. you know, after, and Gomez now he then Matty gets injured against against um, uh, Sheffield, right? And then he comes in for Salzburg, and, and he doesn't have a good game. That game could have allowed him now to be on the, in the first team because he would have ended up playing against Leicester, as I said, against Spurs, etc. Right, but the Lovren's come back in. It comes like, you know what? Why would I give Gomez another game when Lovren's sitting there waiting for his chance? So Lovren's coming out, had, had a good game against Leicester, and then he, he's continuing the games. And then Lovren, and Gomez had another chance against Arsenal, and he didn't have the best games. So it's like, you know, he's not helping himself, really, is he? He's not helping himself. Yeah, it just looks like his confidence just isn't there, and which is weird because, you know, you, you fast uh, rewind, I should say. Um, to last season where he started with, with Van Dyke and people were saying, man, this could be our center back tandem for years to come. And th- that's with not really knowing what Matip was going to pull out of the hat. I mean, this guy totally pulled a rabbit out of the hat and was incredible. Um, one of our best players last season. So, you know, again, I, I don't know what's up with Gomez. I really don't. I don't know if, the, the, if, if, if he's, if, if, if he's playing different because of the, he's the, the, he's scared about getting injuries. I don't, I have no, I, at this point, I'm just confused as to why he's not putting in performances. Um, Cause he, he's a hell of a player and I just don't know what's going on. So, you know, again, uh, it's, it, in that team, the players will tell you it's about 
battling hard to get spots. And I want to see hopefully more he's doing that in training, hopefully. And then, you know, Gomez will get more games this season. We know that. Um, and so, you know, again, I just hope that this center backs we have left other than Van Dyke can, can stay healthy, number one. And if they do, that, that between the two of them until Matthew is back, it's hard to really tell how long Matthew is going to be. I've heard six weeks. I've heard four weeks. I don't think anyone really knows. But no, no, matter, no matter how long it is, say again? Yeah, Klopp said a few weeks, and he said that a few weeks. Yeah, you know, but you never really know what that, you know, that's, was that yeah, more than three, I guess, right? I think he's going to be out for long, because what he said was, he said uh, a few weeks. He said, Matthew's going to be out a few weeks, and he said a few weeks is, 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 is three weeks at least. So he's obviously yeah. going to be out for a month. A month and over. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it, it's devastating, really, isn't it? Because and then, and, and, it's odd. Yeah. Really, it's really odd, really, because because he's playing against United, and then he's he gets injured. So how? I don't understand. Like, I, I just didn't understand it really at all. But I think I'm, what, thinking, what, I'm thinking he probably had something already going into that game, and it probably just got worse. That, that has to be it. Um. So yeah. And, and, and Lovren, right? I think what Klopp has done with Lovren is he's obviously looked at the injury with with that tip, and he's trying to get Lovren. Uh, some rhythm. He's trying to get mm. run, run some rhythm because and, and Gomez. I think he's, there's going to be a bit more rotation. I think maybe um, Gomez will play against Genk on Wednesday. Mm. I think Genk mm. will play against Genk on Wednesday. I think we'll see a few more, a bit more rotation because of the City game. And yeah. uh, I mean, City, Lovren's going to play against City, isn't he? Uh, uh, just, I don't trust him. Yeah. I don't trust him. I still trust Gomez more than him. I st- even though Gomez didn't play well, I just yeah. trust Gomez. I don't think Gomez, I think Gomez is still a better player than him. You know, he's still a better player even when Gomez isn't at his best. Um, because I think he's Gomez will be a bit, bit, bit more switched on alongside Van Dyke a bit more uh, the more games he has against uh, alongside Van Dyke. Uh, I don't, don't, I don't trust Lovren in City. I just don't trust it. I'm a bit worried there with, with him there. I am a bit worried if I'm honest with you. Uh, and listen, mommy, mate, I love you, but bloody deal. I don't know what you're talking about there with, with, with Lovren in City because do you remember last year. Um, where Guerrero gets in front of him and he scores the goal. Do you also remember, mm. do you also remember where, <laughs> where at, do you also remember Anfield, the Lovren gives away, he should have given away a penalty where he kicks Aguero. Do you remember that moment? Yeah. Where he kicks yeah. Aguero in the box. Plumpy yeah. things like that, uh, moments like that, I don't trust him. I don't trust him, I'm sorry, but I'll never trust him in a little show. I'll never trust him whatever he does. Yeah, I mean, again, I, just, I, I, I gotta just, I gotta just hope that, um, you know, because we're, because we're so sound defensively as a unit, um, yeah, especially, yeah. especially with having Fabinho in there as well to to just be that defensive cover. Then I gotta just hope that you know, of course they're gonna attack that side. They're probably gonna do that anyway with Trent because they think Trent is weak. So they're definitely gonna get we're definitely gonna get attacks down that side, and we just gotta be well to, to to help cover for it. Simple as that, you know. And hopefully, because City are so so um, you know, able to get you know you can get at them right now, especially with their defensive issues. You know, maybe it'll just be a a, a slugfest, and we just you know, there's goals and everything, but. I just think that uh, we're good enough defensively to, to make up for what could be a real big problem with, with Lovren. And look, let's let's hope we're proved wrong. Let's hope Lovren has an incredible game and people are saying, wow, okay, at least for today, for this weekend, Lovren is, is, has played really well. That's all. I mean, I think it, 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 it works and helps, helps you better to think that way because, look, we all know what kind of mistakes he can make. But I'm just going to try to think that, you know, he'll, he'll have a good game against City. Hopefully he's G'd up, but it's not G'd up to a point where he's just making silly mistakes. He plays within himself. Um, you know, a lot of it has to do with, I just think, you know, the the the, the coaches will never come out and, and, and talk bad about him like the fans do. But the, the coaches know that he he has these 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 brain dead moments. And, and it's up to them to really, really get him in the in the best position, best situation to, to, to be up for that game. And so... You know, again, with Van Dyke next to him, Robertson, the goalkeeper, and all that, I think we'll be fine. I think these this team has been looking forward to to playing this city game. I think that's the first game they circled on the on the calendar this season, and so they'll be up for it. And I think they'll perform well. But the first thing first is, is Aston Villa, and I think we get past that, um, they win a really really good way. And obviously, we beat City, then we're looking really 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 good. So, um, you know, Aston Villa, then I think it's Gink, and then City. Is that how it goes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think we should be fine. I'm excited about the Aston Villa game. Um, surprisingly here, it's like a blackout, so they're not televising it, so we'll have to go to a, a particular pub that, that shows all the games. But um, you, so, Say again? You can't watch it as well? Yeah, it's weird because that's, that's never really the case here. I, we always have it. Um, well, they have it on this, this special package. you got to pay a ridiculous amount of money to watch it. I'm not doing that. But we're going to go to a, a, a pub nearby that's like a Liverpool supporters pub, and they'll, they'll have the game on. 
So we'll do that. Uh, I hate to go watch games uh, at, a, at a pub with my son on Saturdays. I'd rather just watch them here, but that's the situation we have now. So it's a blackout there for sure. You got to find like a stream or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, 3 p.m. kickoffs, they don't, they're not here in the UK. But as oh, I said, right, right, right. Okay. It's kids to go out more. I mean, bloody right, hell. Right. So did I, when I was like, when I, 10 years ago, whenever, when I was, when I was like, you know, seven or eight years old, was I, was I, you know, was I, um, was I going out to play football because Liverpool wasn't on TV? You know what I mean? I was still yeah, yeah. finding the stream. You, you, obviously, it's not hard to find the stream. It takes like three minutes, three, two to three minutes to find the stream. It's not hard. All we have to type in is Liverpool, Leicester, Aston Villa, Liverpool stream. And there'll be plenty of links there. Do you know mm. what I mean? So I understand the nonsense with that. But yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, you, you're you going to have to watch it hours on, aren't you? So, yeah. It's, it, yes, in the, that's right. You can't, even watch, you can't even watch it in a pub in the UK because it doesn't show oh, any. Oh, wow. wow. It's like, it doesn't okay. show where. It's like, you have to buy, you have to buy these sort of, they call it dodgy boxes, where they show, they show 3 p.m. kickoffs in the UK. Um, that's but, a shame, man. It's a shame. It, it, but I'll just, I'll just stream it on my, on my TV. You know, I can just get a link on Twitter. Uh, and stream on my TV, but obviously what I do is I never really talk or I don't go on Twitter during the um, games because I turn my phone off because it's it's normally a minute behind or two minutes behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate that. I've, I've made that mistake before, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want spoilers for um, celebrations and stuff. You know what I mean? I want to watch the game as if it's live. But yeah, yeah we should Def- we should be definitely good turn off your alerts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we'll uh try to get back um uh hopefully uh, after the game on Saturday and just to brief that and then try not to look past Gink, but I'm sure we'll be talking about City just after the Aston Villa game because it just seems like a, a bigger so game for us. So excited about City. I'm uh, really man, excited. I can't wait. I can't I wait. So the way. I want to get this game on the way and just like, forget Gink. Gink, just get that out of the way as well. I just yeah. want City. I can't wait for next Sunday. Just I'm so excited. Like, because in, in, um, in, in, in the UK, you get this sort of Super, I don't know if you've heard of it before. Super Sunday, I don't know if you've heard of it before. Oh, yeah, Super. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is, was, it, uh, is it a city game on Sunday? Yeah, 4 oh, 30. I didn't know that. Damn, okay. All 4 30. Right. It's, it's like you get this big build up before. It's be worth like, the wait. Yeah. You get like, yeah, you get like Gary Neville, Jamie Carroll, Graham Sooners, Roy Keane, all these mm-hmm. guests on there. Just you know, or Joseph Mourinho will probably be there as well, you know, because he signed up for Sky Sports. Um, yeah. So it's just, oh, I'm really excited. I just want, that's why the, the but this Villa game is massive as well. Obviously, it's three points. Oh, for sure. Game. So yeah. we don't want to be going to the game, you know, like dropping points on, you know, we're four points behind or three points behind. We want to go into that game, six, because City will smash Southampton. Um, so we want to go into that game, six points, try to get the gap to, to, to nine. That's, that's to be the aim. You know, whatever happens, win our game and then look forward to Sunday because what a massive game that is. is uh, I'm really, really excited. I can't wait for that game. Honestly, I just want to. I just wanted to be this time next week, right now. Yeah, it'll be worth the wait. The wait to Sunday. I didn't realize it was Sunday, but it'll be worth the wait. I can't. I cannot wait for that game. Um, and it'll you know, be, uh, twelve thirty for you. Twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. Yeah, for you. yeah. Now that one, I'll be able to watch at home, so we'll be here. It's cool. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that, and um, you know, just hoping to see a really, really good performance against Aston Villa uh, to make it a really, really great week of football. We you know, we, we handled Spurs. Um, yeah, we, we beat Arsenal and um oh yeah wow we beat Arsenal Spurs yeah wow and then uh yeah, we, let's let's make it a, a yeah let's make it a let's make it a trio against Aston Villa but yeah man thanks for always uh, making some time I gotta get out of here get to work and um, yeah, no, yeah I, I, I'll talk to you soon bro you too enjoy work see you later mate. see you.